the amount of hours that I've spent in my life trying to make NVIMDAP work for my Node.js applications is freaking ridiculous. And I know that I'm not the only one. If you check out, for example, Reddit, there's always a person asking the same question. How do I make it work? I cannot make it work for my Node.js apps. And I'm not gonna lie, previously it was a deal breaker for me and it made me stop using NeoVim because I couldn't debug my Node.js apps. So I went back to VS Code. But now I finally understand how it works and it's actually very simple. So I hope this video will clear it up for you as well. All right, let's start by looking at the moving parts. So debugging in NeoVim happens by using the NVIM DAP package. DAP stands for Debugging Adapter Protocol, which is a specification built by Microsoft so that the IDE, in our case, NeoVim, and the debugging adapter know how to talk to each other. So starting from the left, we have our NeoVim IDE, which talks to NVIM DAP, which in turn talks to the VS Code JS debug adapter. But in between them, we're also using the NVIM DAP VS Code JS plugin, which basically adds the adapters for Node, PWA nodes, configurations for JavaScript, TypeScript, etc. So this is all there is to it. NVIMDAP talks to the VS Code JS debug adapter, and that's how we can debug in NeoVim. All right, let's check out the configuration. I'm using LazyVim, so I have this dap.lua file in my lua slash plugins directory. And this is basically configuring all the packages, the dependencies, etc. You can easily do this in Packer, for example. So let's start. At the top of the file, I have a JS-based languages table, which contains TypeScript, JavaScript, TypeScript React, JavaScript React, and also Vue. By the way, the TypeScript JavaScript and the React TypeScript JavaScript are actually default, and they're already registered by the NVIMDAP VS Code JS plugin but I still needed to override them because I also want to add Vue to it. All right, the first thing that we want to define is the nvim-dap plugin. We get into the config, we require dap, we require the lazyvim.config plugin, which I think basically adds the highlights and the debug symbols, etc. This is the default nvim-dap config that lazyvim provides. So if you open the dap core inside of the extras dap dap core, and click on the full spec, you'll also see the same thing. There it is. So, because I want to override the config property, I just grabbed whatever was there by default and continued. So the first thing after this that we wanna do is define or loop through the JS-based languages and for each of the languages, define three debugging configurations. So for example, the first one is the PWA node launch file and this would allow me to just run a single JS or TS file and debug it like an ordinary script. Then we have the attach. So I can attach to an already existing debugging process that I've probably ran by doing pmpm dev or yarn dev or something like that. Then the third one is the PWA Chrome so that I can run Chrome and debug the client side, okay? This is the standard one. As you can see, if you've used Visual Studio Code and created launch configurations for VS Code, you'll see that they're actually the same. One thing that I also have here, which is unique for my case, is that I'm getting the URL in, a, in this weird way. So I'm obtaining the currently running coroutine. I create a new one so that I can open an input on the screen so I can enter the URL that I'm trying to open. For example, by default is localhost 3000, but if I were to debug Astro applications, then it would be 4321, and I can provide that whenever I run this configuration. So that's what it does, basically. And then I have this placeholder configuration, which, which exists only to divide or separate the launch.json configurations from the default ones, the built-in ones. And yes, we are going to derive any custom configurations from the launch.json file as well. Okay, then I'm overriding some of the keys. And I did this because I want to swap out the step out and the step over. And then I override the DA, which is run with arguments. And this is where the magic happens, by the way. If the .vs code slash launch.json file exists, then I'm requiring the vs code dap extension and I'm invoking the load underscore launch JS 
method, which actually is going to open launch.json, read all the configs, and append them to our DAP configurations for those languages. And also append PWA node, node Chrome, and PWA Chrome, and set them to the same JS based languages table. Cool. And then we just continue. So that's it for NVIM DAP. Now we're going to get into configuring the dependencies. First thing that we want to do is install the VS Code JS Debug Adapter. This is what actually VS Code uses under the hood. And we can install it like this. But there's one catch. After we install it, in order to build it, to compile the TypeScript, and basically prepare it for use with NeoVim for NVIM DAP, we need to invoke this command, which does that whole thing. And at the end, it just renames the dist folder to pout. Cool. So that's how we configure the VS Code JS debug. And remember, that was this part right here, the last part. That is our adapter. We also need this piece right here. And that's next. mxstf slash nvimdap VS Code JS. This is that quality of life package that we use to cut a few corners. All right, so let's set it up. It has a default configuration, and I've left these, the default values as comments, so you can check them out. But the most important thing, configure the debugger path, which points to the VS Code JS debug. And since we use lazy nvim to install the VS Code JS debug, what I'm doing here is basically resolve the path, give me the standard path for the data, which points to the local slash nvim slash lazy, I think, or just nvim. And then we concatenate slash lazy slash VS Code JS debug. And inside, there's the out directory, which used to be this. That's why we're doing this. So this is how we tell NVIM DAP where's our debugger. Cool. Then we define which adapters we want to register. And here they are. By default, all of the PWAs are included. But I also added Chrome, Node Terminal, and Node. I probably don't need these because I haven't tested out if I actually need these. All of my debug configs are with PWA, so you could probably avoid doing this as well gonna be cleaner. And that's it. You can also configure some logging settings. But yeah, the defaults are just fine. And at the end, we also define or configure the Lua JSON 5, which is used to read out and parse the launch.json file if it exists. And after it's installed, we just invoke the install.sh. And that's pretty much it. That's how we configure the NVIM DAP and all of its dependencies. Let's see how that works. Right here, I have a Nuxt.js application. And we're going to explore three modes of debugging. That's server-side debugging, client-side debugging by running Chrome, and also attaching to an already running pmpm dev process. Okay, so this file is um, an API endpoint, so it's on the server side. So if I want to add a breakpoint, all I need to do is hit space D and B. And we're going to see this little symbol on the left. That means it's a breakpoint. Cool. Let's also open uh, let's also open the create.view, which is a, of course a view file. It's a client side. And I'm gonna add a breakpoint on this line as well. And let's let's run it now. If I do litter D A, I have all of the configurations that I can pick from, like the launch file. We're not going to do that because we're not launching a single file. The attach, that's going to be last. Launch and debug Chrome, which will just open uh, Chrome on local host and then the port. Here's that divider. I think it looks nice. You don't have to add it if you don't want it to. I just wanted to separate the default ones with the launch JSON specific ones. And then this is a launch JSON configuration for running the Nuxt server. Let's open that first. So VS code slash launch.json. It's a PWA-node. It's a launch request. There's the name. There's the program. This is basically how you debug Nuxt applications. We set the current working directory. The output capture is set to standard. We do allow source maps and the arguments are set to dev. Again, part of the standard Nuxt debugging configuration. Cool. So we're going to run that now. So leader DA run with arguments and I'm going to run server colon nuxt. This is the server side. As soon as we do that, we're going to see the nvim dap UI package kick in. And this is automatically, at least for me, because I use lazy vim. But when you do, when you enable the dap extras in lazy vim, 
It's going to configure the NVIM DAP UI for you, which is basically these panes for debugging. Uh, the NVIM DAP virtual text, so that you can have a little virtual text with the current value of that variable next to it. Mason NVIM DAP for the Mason integration, and also the which key that only adds the leader D group name for debug. Otherwise, as you know, it's going to be just prefix. Cool, so we are currently running the server side. So if I were to open localhost on 3000, we're going to see the website, cool, we're running it. Let's trigger the server side breakpoint. I'm just gonna type in some, some of the fields here. And if I hit add to plate, and I'm actually gonna put this side by side so you can see when the breakpoint gets hit. There we go, so when I hit the add to plate, this breakpoint is going to get hit and the icon is gonna change. So check this out. There we go. The icon has changed. We got some data in the panes here and now we're actually in debug mode. So let me zoom this in. There we go. If I hit leader D and then hit O for step over, this line is gonna get executed. And here's that little virtual text, which is super cool to have. Uh, but there's also one more trick. So if you hover on the variable and you hit D, and E for evaluate, you'll have this little window, which is basically like hovering on the variable in VS Code. To get inside, you'll do DE again, hit enter, and you can check out the actual value of this variable at this moment, which is pretty cool. The panes right here, and we're not gonna get into too much detail, but you can navigate through them just by navigating between windows. And uh, yeah, these are all of the local variables in the block that the DAP sees. These are all your breakpoints. This is your call stack. And these are just expressions, JavaScript expressions that you want to keep an eye on. For example, query is going to give us the actual value. We can do query.url if we wanted to keep an eye only on the URL, etc. So yeah, this is the logs. And I have no idea what this pane is. I usually just quit it. And the beauty of this is that you can also uh, use this without the UI. So if I do the U, it toggles the UI, but I can still invoke, evaluate, and check out the values, etc. Okay, cool. That's how we can debug server side. Let's try the Chrome next. So I'm going to run the server again. Yeah, just so I can have a running configuration and do DA. Now the options are different. We can terminate the session because it already exists. We can pause, restart, etc. But I'm going to do start additional session, this option here, and I'm going to pick the launch and debug Chrome. So if I hit next, here's that little UI that we saw back in our config. There we go. The core routine start and the Vim UI input field. Yeah, that's that. You have the opportunity to change the port if you wanted to, but but by default, I just set it to 3000 because that's the usual port for my Node.js projects. We'll hit enter and we'll see Chrome launch. And I'm gonna put this side by side as well. And this time when I hit on the create a plate link, the other breakpoint is going to be hit. So let's see that. There we go. Now we are in basically on the client side. So let's see what happens. Let's step over one time and let's check out the plate. Okay, this is a storage object from the use storage composable. We're basically debugging in Chrome right now. Let's continue that and fill in some of the data again. There we go. So now if I hit add to plate, we're going to hit the server side breakpoint and voila. Now we are debugging the server side. So that's how full stack debugging works like in NeoVim. So let's check out the attach debugging now. Attach basically means I want to attach my debugger to an already running Node.js process. So let's start one. Let's open a terminal and do pmpm dev to boot up our Next.js application. You know, so if I refresh localhost 3000, there's our app. Cool. Let's try to attach to this process now. We're going to pick the attach configuration and now we're presented with a list of all the processes that we can see. And we're going to search for Nuxi because that's what the process is called for running Next.js apps. And it's usually the first one, so I'm just going to hit enter. And we see the UI, but give it a second. Debug adapter didn't respond. It's either slow or there is a problem with your configuration probably. And there's the error now. Could not connect to debug target at localhost 
9229. Okay, what this basically means is that it tried to hook up the debugger to that port, 9229, but the Nuxi process does not accept it. And this is a Node.js thing. So by default, a debugging client is not start along with the process. Although maybe some frameworks do, I'm not sure. But in order to make the Node.js process debuggable, we need to append the dash dash inspect flag next to the arguments in the package.json script. And what this does is that it starts listening for a debugging client at that exact port. Let's try that. Let's open the package.json. And where we have the dev script, and this actually will run the dev nuxt, basically, where we have the dev script, all we need to do is just add dash dash inspect. And we're gonna hit save. Let's go back to our server side file and restart the script. So I'm gonna do pmpm dev again, but check this out. Now when I do pmpm dev again, this is a new thing. Debugger listening on localhost, 9229. See that? This tells us that we're starting the debugging client as well. Okay, cool. Let's try to attach to the process now. Leader the A, attach Nuxi. It's probably the first one. Hit enter. And there we go. We are attached. If we look at the terminal, we're also going to see a message debugger attached. So this means that we're in the clear. We can actually debug our application just like we did previously. Let's hit add to play. There we go we have attached to an already running Node.js process. Beautiful. That's it for this lesson. I really hope that I explained debugging in NeoVim for Node.js projects, and I hope I'm putting a stop to all your pain. Enjoy.